Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Robinson and I'm going to show you how to use the Castle Learning software for teachers. So the first thing you know, you have to go to the Castle Learning website and I would bookmark it and that way you can get to it very quickly. So once you're on the Castle Learning website, you go to the sign in button. So let's click sign in. You have to, t you can type in your email or ID number. So if you type in your ID, uh, it's PS dot first name dot last name. And then you click in your password hopefully you've been set up already for password and you set that up already so let me type in my password and then sign in and it takes a second or two to sign in so to confirm okay we seem to be coming through so it's going to go to the home page this is the home page and there's a getting started guide you may want to look at, but I'm just going to go straight to the crux of the matter. When you need to set up classes, you would click on classes. And this allows you to set up classes. If you notice, I've already set up some and I want to set up another class. So I'm going to set up a new class called my period 10. And I'm going to click on create new class so if you notice there it is period 10 now there's some actions that I can do with period 10 the pencil indicates rename the class if I want to rename it if I want to trash it delete the class so that's a couple things I can do if I click on the class itself the name class name itself it says you do not have any students in this class. Would you like to add students to the class now? Yes, I would. So it's loading the data, which is the names of all the students in our school. And you can use the filter. If you click on the plus where it says category filter, if you wanted a certain grade, suppose you wanted all sixth grade students. We click that and notice down here the category goes just all sixth grade students. If you wanted to click off that, it's now going to show all the students and supposedly I wanted all the eighth grade students. So, so my filter allows me to filter out the grade level, which makes it a lot shorter. I I'm in the middle school, but I can choose students from other schools if I desire to go there. I can search for a student by their last name. So like if I wanted somebody in Smith, there it is. There are the students by that name. If I wanted an ID number, I can use that by searching by the ID number. I can alphabetize, go to uh, people by the letter of their last name so if I press C notice how the C's came, came up as their last name so now I'm ready to add students to my class so I have to scroll down to find those students who are in that class and click on the check box and again if I wanted to Go over to a different letter, like I want to go to T. Just click on the letter T, and I jumped over there. Those names that were checked off will stay there. So let's get a couple of T's. All right, so those are the students that I've chosen. It says at the bottom when you scroll down, add check students. So I'll click that. And there are the students, the ones who I checked off who were my C's, and they're the t two people I checked off for the T's, and then now they're added to my list of students. So now I have a class set up. Let's go back 
to the home page or you can click home so I'm back here and let me go home so we can just take a look at what's on the home page the assignments so now we want to create an assignment so we click on assignments on the assignments you'll find different types of courses that you want to create so here are the different courses that we have in there whether it be elementary mathematics elementary science any course that you want is offered in here up to AP courses so choose whatever course you're interested in and suppose I'm interested in in elementary mathematics so that folder comes up and I want to create an assignment. I notice I have an assignment here that I created on probability some time ago. And I'm going to create a new assignment. So type the name of the assignment. Suppose I want to create adding integers. So I type the name, click create. Now this assignment is being loaded up for data so I can choose my material where I want to get my material from. I can get Castle Learning questions. I can get uh, public assignments. Let me just click on that to show you that. Here are some of the state test sample questions that are there from 2013, 14, and a few others from 2012 sampler pack. So if I wanted to get some from the book one, the book one or book two or book three from 2013-14 test, all I have to do is click on the plus sign to add questions to the assignment. And I'll click on the first one, for book one. And now it's going to give me the actual test questions that are available on Castle Learning with uh, those topics. So if I wanted to choose a question it says there are all 20 34 questions in all on this in this booklet 34 happen to be multiple choice there are no fill-ins so if you look over here these levels are the levels of how high the aptitude is of the question so each question has a answer to it as well as well as an identification number so if I wanted to choose this question, the answer is B. It's a level D question. And if I wanted to choose that question, I would just click in the box. And notice over here, this question is now assigned. If I didn't want that question, I just click out of it. And notice now assigned zero. So let's look for something that deals with our topic. You can use any question that you want from that, or if you choose not to use any of these, you don't have to. Here, let's see. Here's one about integers, it looks like. So it's a nice question from the state test, and the kids have it. That's one assigned. So if I keep looking to see what else they have, I can use any other questions, by the way. I want, but I'm focusing on addition of of integers. So I don't see anything yet. I can go down to the very, very bottom and go to the next page of the doc of the file to see more questions and see if there's anything in there. If I don't see anything, I can get out of it. So, so let's go back. So I can choose another booklet to add questions, but I want to go to Castle Questions and show you something there. So these are the Castle Learning Assignments questions that they have in their data bank. So you can choose based on the standard, Common Core, what grade that you want to choose. So sixth grade, and notice standards and Common Core are checked off. So it has the sixth grade standards there. You can choose seventh grade, eighth grade standards if you're interested in. Go to next. 
and now it talks about the type of questions that are going to be given these are elementary school up to some middle school type questions uh, based on their levels and now go down and choose the topic the topics that are in the data banks are different ones and if you click on the plus sign uh, drop down menu shows that you can see what it is in that topic so so you can click on it and it'll generate questions so let's see um, algebra orders of operation um, so, so addition and subtraction equations so let's see uh, uh, working with decimals let's see what's in there adding subtracting decimals so I don't see the number system of integers so so I can go to a different level go to the number system and show that go to next and get that some of the middle school questions are those levels let's go down so let's see working with fractions percent algebra so it doesn't have it here so I guess I gotta go back out so I'll go back out and choose the intermediate math so let me go back out and I'll choose intermediate math because the integers are not in sixth grade so I just have to go up a different level and by the way that button allows you to go to different levels so it loads different banks so that's a good button to know, to, to know. and there are the other topics if you want to go and ask those type of questions So let's go scroll down a little bit. So let's clear this because I've been using this already. So integers, there's integers. And now integer signs, adding, subtracting integers, and dividing integers. So there it is. That's what I needed. So I can save the choices and update the count. Uh, that just allows you to see how many different questions there are save choices and show me questions is what you'll need because you want to see the questions that you're selecting <laughs> so now it's loading the questions there are all in 87 questions 42 are multiple choice 45 are fill in number of questions that i can that can be added is 1 to 99 you can randomly add question selection so this is a good feature that you can have the computer of Castle Learning generate 20 questions or more uh, at, its, at your convenience where you don't have to look at each question to see if it's appropriate for your group. It'll generally uh, select questions and that's a good feature. So I'm going to just get 20 questions. Note that any question in quarantine will not be added. Uh, okay, so we, we wish to continue. Yes. So it's just going to generate some questions. And if you notice, we had one question selected, but the the computer also generated some questions for us. So if we look at them, you'll see these are different level questions. And they have to deal with integers because that was the topic that you chose. So it did it for you without you having select. You may or may not like the question, and there's a way to modify your assignment. So you can rename the assignment if you don't like that. You can uh, add or remove the question if you don't like question number 17. All you do is click on remove question, and the question is removed. You can add more questions if you want. If you want to add more questions and you don't think you've given enough, you go back to click on Add Questions and then go through the process that we just done with load, loading the data 
and selecting your topics. So it's now loading and now it'll show you what questions are available. So look at what topic is available. So you can change topics. Suppose you wanted to put some decimals in there. So rounding or adding decimals. So you would click on that and it would add on to your list of available questions and it will show you even more questions that are available. So there are now 125 questions available as opposed to the few that we had before. So now we have 62 multiple choice and 63 fill in. This is a great, great way to generate worksheets, by the way. So it's a good way to, to save yourself time, again, by randomly selecting. If you want to select another 20 questions, you notice you have assigned already 20 questions. If you want to select another 20, it tells you that quarantine message. And so now it's loading on another 20 to the ones that you have. And uh, we have, it looks like, um, 34 questions. So it didn't uh, be redundant with some of the questions that it selected. It selects, it likes to select at random different questions. So therefore, some of the questions were not repeated. So it gives variety in the question selection. So you have your questions. You can look at them. Again, if you don't like them and you want to get rid of them, you can remove a question. I ask you, are you sure you want to remove it? And it's gone. When you get down to the part where you're ready to print an assignment, you can print it out by clicking the assignment button. And you'll see your message here for format for printing. It prints out the name. Here's some button you can type uh, show all work on a separate page to Monday and now that you created that you can have the teacher name there uh, display the answer key on the last page. You need that for yourself so you can see, you'll see the answer so you don't have to work out every question. You can have it in one or two columns. If you want, I'll show you. I have two columns checked off. I'll show you what that looks like, why I have it checked off, because you want to say paper. So there it is in one column, and now you have two columns because some of the examples are short. So if you can scroll down and see what it looks like, so how many di different pages that you have, that's one of the things that might be bothersome. It is um, long, a long, lengthy document if you put it in two columns sometimes. So depending on how many questions you select, the longer the document. And there's the last page, the answer key. So you can then print it. And just go to print. And it'll print your document. Notice on the top, show all work on a separate page. Do Monday. There's a space for the name. There's your name up there. And you print, and you're ready to go. So there's your handout. So that's Castle Learning. Let me go back home. There are reports that you can take a look at. I'm not going to get into that right now at this time, but there are very good reports that you might want to look at and explore Castle Learning. There's an informational center. You can look at some videos of instruction that you can see. So I recommend you explore Castle Learning at your leisure. So I hope you got something out of this. And uh, if you need to see me, you can write me an email at drobinson at peakskillcsd.org, and I'll be glad to answer your question. So this is Dr. Robinson signing off. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.